I think all of us have heard the phrase, America, the land of opportunity. Well, on this episode, it certainly is something real. I have a conversation with Jeff Badu. Jeff is from Ghana, Africa, and he's going to tell us about how he grew up and what it was like and some twists and turns in the story. What's fascinating is we fast forward the clock to where he is now. He's still young, but he has made a mark. He's a real estate professional owning a lot of real estate properties. He owns several companies, provides scholarships for kids in his community, owns an investment company, and he's impacting his community as an incredible example. So you're going to get to hear his story, something that is incredibly fascinating. And you're going to get to hear how maybe you as a business owner can find a mentor or possibly mentor other people. This episode was insightful for me. I think every single episode is one of those that teaches a lesson or two that really is awe-inspiring. But what I will say is this one is special for all of our international listeners. See, Every single month, I get a report that is showing me where our listeners are from. And we have listeners from all over the world. For you international listeners, this one is special. I sincerely and seriously thank all of you. So if you do have questions, if you are looking for a mentor, if you're looking for ways to really grow your business, I hope that this podcast is a solution for you. And if you're looking for ways that will help your business here in America, where I'm located currently, then I promise this episode won't disappoint. Let's go in to the episode and hear from Jeff. Hey, I'm Jeff Badu, wealth multiplier and a parallel entrepreneur. Jeff, welcome to the podcast. I'm honored to have you. Yeah, thank you, Spencer. Definitely appreciate it. So we were connected through a mutual friend. And I find that uh, whenever mutual friends provide connections, that carries mm-hmm. something of weight uh, because it it skips a lot of the that cold relationship stuff. And it's, you know, if you think of it as like a video game in many ways, it's like getting a cheat code. And it's like, oh, no, we're not going to start at level one. We're here at level five. <laughs> Exactly. So it's kind of cool. Uh, what would be really helpful is for you to kind of give a, a little bit of a snapshot or a journey of mm-hmm. who you are and you know some of that upbringing and then bring us up to speed. Yeah, so definitely appreciate you for having me on today. Um, it's always an honor and a pleasure to speak to a group of like-minded people. And I know people will definitely benefit from this as well. Um, so with that, um, I am Jeff Badu. I'm a licensed CPA of certified public accountant, and I'm a parallel entrepreneur and a wealth multiplier. And how I really came along that journey is first and foremost, I was born and raised in Ghana, which for those who don't know, Ghana is in the west side of Africa. And essentially growing up, um, you know, things were pretty good. Um, Life wasn't too bad. It wasn't a struggle or anything like that. Things were pretty good. Uh, my parents had actually migrated to the United States, um, Chicago specifically, um, when I was very, very young. So right after I was born, my parents essentially got migrated to the U.S. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't bring me along. So they had to move over there and then they would visit occasionally, you know, and just make sure I'm good. So I was living with my aunt when I was a kid. And my parents, they were doing pretty good. You know, they were working typical jobs and then they would send money back home to buy real estate or to invest. And that was definitely something I learned early is that you should invest your money early um, because it will grow over time. And then also in the game of real estate, there's a thing called cash flow, which is money that you're making every month from tenants paying you. And as a matter of fact, in Ghana, um, some tenants pay you up to two years in advance. I've actually seen three years advance rent on the property, which is unheard of in the U.S. Um, so just, just thought that would be fun to share. So for me, I got exposed to real estate very, very early. And I also got exposed to entrepreneurship very early. So I'm the type of person where if you gave me a piece of candy, 
like if you gave me a candy bar, I would say thank you, first of all, and then I'll go out and sell it on the streets, basically, because I saw other people doing the same and you tend to become what you see. And with the Ghana, you know, the way that Ghana is built is it's a very entrepreneurship hustle, hustle mentality. There's not really government programs like Section 8 food stamps or anything like that. So you really have to go out and hustle. So if you don't have parents that are working or anything like that, then you have to go out on the street yourself and basically sell whatever it takes to make ends meet, whether it be fruits, apples, oranges, bread, right, whatever it is. Um, so that's just a little bit of background on the Ghana side. And I moved to the U.S. when I was eight years old. So I actually got um, accepted into the immigration lottery um, and migrated with my older sister. And, you know, that was back in 2001. Um, so with that being said, the challenge, though, was I was put into a neighborhood called Uptown, which for those who don't know, Uptown back at the time was not the best neighborhood to put a child, especially someone who's young, someone who just came to America, getting used to the American lifestyle. So long story short, I surrounded myself with not the right, you know, not the right people, at least people who you would want your kids to be hanging around. Um, so it was, it was a pretty rough time. I mean, it was very, very rough. There were a, a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations, a lot of um, struggle, basically, you know, going to that point. And I had never been exposed to something like this before in my life. So I didn't know what to do. You know, I was a lost child. Yes, I have both parents and they were coaching and mentoring me as best as they could. But at the end of the day, they weren't out there with me when I was actually out on the streets, right? When I was actually hanging out with friends, they don't know what we were doing. Um, so with that being said, fast forward to when I was 16, I took a trip back to Ghana. It was a family vacation. And literally, as I know, that would be the turning point of my life. That would be the most life-inspiring, most breakthrough moment of my entire life. And that's when I discovered my purpose in life, which is to inspire and support the super hungry to take hold of infinite resources in order to create an abundant lifestyle. How in the world did I come about that? Well, when I took a trip back to Ghana, I saw a struggle firsthand. You know, I had already seen struggle when I was there, when I, you know, when I was young, when I was born and everything. But the problem is I didn't really understand the struggle. I didn't know why. I didn't know what it would be like to have resources versus to not have resources. So what I saw with my own two eyes, for example, was a lady that was carrying a huge load of apples, oranges, right? But not just one, but two babies wrapped around her back. And I said, holy cow you know, that struggle, right? That's someone who I'm meant to help because I can see it. She might not say it physically, but I can tell, I can see that there's something that I could do to help this person. Unfortunately, I didn't know what it was. So I basically have to humble myself and say, you know what? I've been given an opportunity to go to the United States of America, home of the free, land of the brave. And for me to throw away opportunities just didn't make any sense because that's exactly what I was doing. And so what I had to do is I had to turn things around. And that's where I tapped into my spiritual life. Um, basically, I got into my faith a lot, you know, so I started going to church. So when we came back to the U.S., I started going to church more, surrounded myself with like minded people. One of my close friends became a mentor of mine who just showed me the ropes, showed me the way um, for it in life. And I also had a youth leader. Um, who she was basically our main youth leader and she became a mentor of me and I ended up becoming a youth leader of the church as well. And she just taught me just different principles, how to stay out of trouble, um, how to react in certain situations because she had actually been there as well. You know, she had gone through a similar journey that I went through when I was between eight and 16. And so she said, hey, when, when you see this, right, walk the other direction. Or when someone says this to you, Try to react in this way. So she taught me those, you know, those principles that you'd want to teach someone who wants to go down a good path, a good journey, doesn't want any trouble, just wants a good life for himself and also for the family. So with that, my grades got better in school due to that mentorship, due to that motivation, because I knew that if I didn't get good grades in school, if I didn't have a good career ahead of me, then I would go back to my old ways, essentially. So I knew I had to turn things around. 
And that, that mentorship really stuck home with me. And for me too, I actually read half the Bible when I was 16 years old, you know, so that allowed me to see things in a different light. I read some of the stories and that really allowed me to, you know, be inspired and also be mentored in a way by the Bible itself because of the stories that were in there. It told me what to do and it told me what not to do. So all I did was the things that it told me to do, right? And that allowed me to continue the journey. So that allowed me really to have a, a good path forward. And I wanted to become an accountant. I had basically read on the news or just read articles, videos, um, that accounting was a good career. And I had already wanted to be in business because I was exposed to entrepreneurship early at a young age. So for that, I said, okay, yeah, you know, I took an assessment and then said, yeah, you're more than likely best fit as an accountant. You like math, you're very detailed oriented, um, you're driven, and you like numbers. So with that being said, um, did a lot of research, talked to mentors, and that's what led me into getting accepted to the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign you know, back in 2010. So I started my freshman year at the U of I in 2010, and I was studying accounting. Um, I had also formed the business plan, which is now known as Badu Tax Services LLC, which is a CPA or tax firm that does tax preparation, tax planning, and tax representation for individuals and businesses across all 50 states in the U.S. And we have clients in over 25 countries at the moment. So along that journey, I was able to you know, get the mentorship that I needed. I had talked to other accountants, other mentors, you know, other leaders, things of that nature. And they, they taught me how to create this business plan with the CPA firm. Um, so it was literally a two page business plan. And fast forward, as I'm going to college, I'm perfecting my craft. I'm doing research at least one hour a day because that's what I was taught to do, you know, to make sure I really understand my industry and I could be a key player in the industry itself. So with that, consistently developed a business plan, started doing taxes for people for free. There were some people that I even paid to do their tax return, which is insane. You know, I said, hey, I'll pay you just to do your taxes because I need to develop the confidence to be able to do this crap. I need to know, is this something I really want bad enough? And I would say, if you don't want something bad enough, then it will show eventually, right? You're going to burn out. Something's going to happen where it, it's going to show the true colors. Um, so for me, I knew it had to be something I really wanted to do. And I knew that eventually I would get paid for it. So I didn't mind doing it for free for the meantime. It was volunteer work. So with that, I also got an internship at PricewaterhouseCoopers or PwC. And that allowed me to get the corporate experience and get the, the professional services experience too. So that way, when I'm delivering professional services to clients, I know how to react in certain environments. I know what type of team members to bring on board. So that experience allowed me to start my firm. And in 2014, I got my bachelor's degree in accounting. 2015, got my master's degree in accounting. And in 2016, got my CPA license after working one year full time with PwC. And that's what led to the launch of Body Tax Services LLC um, in, in 2016. So on September 2nd, 2016, I turned in my two week notice because I was fed up. I didn't want to be chained in the corporate you know, world or anything like that. And I basically broke the chain by, by turning in my two week notice and became a full-time entrepreneur on September 16th, 2016. And fast forward, the firm has grown. We now have over 2,500 clients just across the entire world. And that also led to other businesses such as the Badu Investments. And that's my real estate investment company where we invest in apartment buildings mainly on the south side of Chicago or traditionally underserved communities so that we can restore those communities, put financial literacy in those neighborhoods, and then in exchange, you know, for some cash flow on the rentals. Um, then we have the Badu Foundation, which is the 501c3 nonprofit, where we teach financial literacy education to the youth ages 6 to 18. And we teach them on budgeting, saving, investing, and scholarships. And then at the end, they get a chance to receive a $500 scholarship that can go towards your college or if they want to start a business. So that's a little bit about the journey. Um, and I'll definitely pass it back to you. Spence. That is amazing. You know, there's so many nuggets in here. I'm looking at it and I'm trying to figure out 
where to start. You know, it's we've got parts of Africa. <laughs> uh, we've got a, a turning point that you had when you were 16, the, the mentorship of your parents mm-hmm. and the real estate investing. Um, and then the different work that you have going on. Let's let's go back. You mentioned your parents, they understood uh, the importance of real estate investing, or should say uh, putting capital towards investments. And while they were in America, they did that. I, I think for our listeners, and, and just to give you some context, when I look at our analytics, we have listeners in Ghana. We have listeners in every single continent except Antarctica. And uh, <laughs> we have listeners all throughout the world. And so for you uh, listeners in, in Ghana or whatever country that may be, you may be able to relate. There's something about the immigrant mm-hmm. uh, mentality and work ethic mm. that is different than I see anywhere else. So who taught them the importance of investing? I mean, I don't, to be honest, I don't know the answer to that question um, as to who taught them, but I'm sure they might have um you know, perhaps it could have been colleagues, people they were working with. Um, it could have been, you know, a, a news ad, something that they might have heard. Or it could have been a family member who might have done it before them. I don't know who that family member is, to be honest. So in, in general, I'm sure there was something that allowed them to see the importance of investing. And I know that their friends were also doing the same thing. So I know that motivated them, but I know for a fact there was somebody out there that pioneered the whole journey. There was somebody out there that they maybe saw and said, wow, they're pretty, they're doing pretty good. You know, they came to America, um, they're sending money back home, they're building these buildings. I mean, why can't I do the same? So let me go ahead and apply for the immigration lottery. And I think that that drive, it allows them to become hungry, basically, because they see other people's success. And eventually they want to follow suit as well. And that's exactly what I did. I mean, if you're not seeing something, I mean, how can you really become it? If you're not seeing others do things you want to do, it's going to be very tough for you to become that. Um, so I think that without a doubt, the main point is you should always, if you want to do something, right, look up to people that are already doing it and also find a way to do it even better. Right. So for me, I knew there were accountants already. For me, I knew there was, you know, good CPAs, good accounting practices and all that. But at the end of the day, I didn't learn just from their success. I learned from their mistakes. And I said, what will I do to overcome their mistakes so that I turn their mistakes into my success? You know, there's a lot of um, mentorship that's weaved in there that that you've figured out. Mm-hmm. You, you mentioned you have an investment company that purchases uh real estate in the south side of Chicago. I would assume a lot of that's probably Section 8 housing. Yes, um, and it's other, you know, providing on top of just, you know, Section 8 housing, you leveled it up and you have provided them with scholarships and opportunities to learn. You said something that's different than most real estate investors. Because see, most real estate investors, when I have the conversation, are focused on the cash flow. And like that's the first and often the last thing that they focus on which means it's the only. But you mentioned that you're focused on the community and you're actually transforming it. Yeah. Tell me about that. What does that look like? In Chicago, right, it's, um, and and the same can be said for other communities, other neighborhoods. There's a lot, first of all, there's a lot of violence when it comes to certain sides of Chicago, like the South Side. Growing up, you know, I learned that part of that really has to do with some sort of financial illiteracy. Because part of the reason why the violence is occurring is because they're trying to make some money, right? They don't really have a whole lot. They don't, they don't know a whole lot. And so with that, a lot of that violence is really occurring because of the fact that nobody has really sat down and taught people like, hey, this is a good way to actually make legitimate, solid money. You can invest in real estate. You can start a business. Nobody has really taught that because there's nobody really in the community that's actually willing to teach it. And so with that being said, due to that lack of education, due to that lack of willingness to support, well, that's going to lead to more violence because they're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over and over until somebody comes in and says, you know what, we got to do things a little different around here. 
And so with the Badu Foundation, for example, what we're doing is we're allowing, you know, students from low income communities, such as the south side of Chicago, to be able to apply and get into our financial literacy program. It's a four week program where we teach them on budgeting, saving, investing and scholarships. The four critical components we believe every student should be aware of so that they can stay away from the violence or the streets. They can, you know, even if their parents were growing up in poverty or whatever it is, they can at least do something different and they can be the pioneer behind the financial abundance within their families. Um, so basically, you're right. Nobody else is doing this. If, if someone's buying real estate, they're just really looking to make some money. And I don't really blame them for that. It's just that for us, we're all about impact investing. And because when you invest with an impact, then your returns are even going to be more because what you give, you know, you receive tenfold that. So when you're given so much, you're of course going to receive a lot and you're helping a community. You're helping solve a big problem that's within not just the Chicago community, but there's also other places, Detroit, you know, there's, I mean, there, there's so many places I can name where it, it's insane how much financial you know, illiteracy there is, and that can even be spread across the entire world. Why do you think there's so much? I, I, I have the opinion that I think it's the degradation of the family. Um, it starts there, and then it's the dependence upon the government. See, you know, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't grow up in a household with tons of money. I, in fact, I even growing up lived in a trailer park. And so I've seen both sides of it. However, you know, I had friends that were in incredibly wealthy and I saw how they uh, operated. And so how is it that you're able to help them spring out of there? Because the word in the, on the street, you know, because I've been familiar with it, you're familiar with it, is hustle. Man, you got to have that hustle. Got to have that hustle. And you can't lose that hustle, but it, there's a different hustle to someone that lives in the inner city than there is a hustle of an immigrant. So you have the immigrant hustle. So how are you able to bring this immigrant hustle to the inner city? I mean, yeah, I mean, you said it perfectly in that the hustle begins within. Motivation is a fire from within. So first and foremost, financial literacy is not taught in the school system. I mean, I found that out a long time ago. How? Because I went through the school system myself and didn't learn a thing about money. <laughs> I had to learn on my own, watching YouTube videos, reading books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I would have never known about this stuff. Um, so with that being said, there's got to be someone that comes in that's going to help pioneer that. So for our program, the Badu Foundation Financial Literacy Program, someone does have to demonstrate a certain amount of hunger to even get into the program. So that, that hustle um, is really something within, and you're right, the, let me just wake up, go to work, and just make ends meet, that's a different type of hustle. But when you got somebody who knows basically nothing but grind, I mean, they know that if they stop grinding, they'll go back to the, you know, the old way. That's a, that's a whole nother beast. I mean, that, that's a lion in a cage ready to eat. Um, and that's the type of people yeah. that we're actually looking for to help because that person, when you give them like resources, they'll eat it up immediately and they'll turn something good out of it. And they'll also help others in the process. Um, so you're right. Yeah. The immigrant hustle versus let me just get, go to, you know, wake up, go to work hustle. It's a whole different ball game for sure. It is, you know, you're, you're a mentor in that way. Uh, you know, before we get into the mentor piece, there's something that there are people that are in a bad situation, meaning, you know, they, they're receiving food stamps and government housing, and they're, they're involved with programs. And hey, those programs, some of those are good, some of them are not. Some of those people have had the hustle removed for them, because, because things are provided. So how do you see it that you're able to spark something in those people that maybe didn't have that hustle because you know there's 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 people on the street that have it immigrants that have it and then there's people that are in a rough situation and you say man you should have it but you don't so how how do you help them 
I mean, to help those folks, you just got to supply them with the resources. So, you know, I have my website, jeffbadu.com, which has over 100 hours of free education. I kid you not, you go on the website right now, you'll find over 100 hours worth of videos, worth of, you know, articles, worth of podcasts, whatever it is. It's 100% free. Um, there are some things on the site that are paid. For example, we have courses, you know, we have books, things of that nature. And even some of the books, you can get the ebooks for free. So basically with those folks, all I can do is just put the word out. I can say, hey, check out the website. Hey, if you need additional help, please reach out to me. And doing things like webinars, you know, hosting events and just putting the, the financial literacy word out there because eventually someone who's hungry is going to come eat. If they're not hungry, then they just won't eat. They'll stay back and keep doing things the way that that they continuously do it until something tragic happens. Until maybe they say, hey, we're taking away these programs from you. Well, now what? You go homeless? Um, which I don't think anybody wants to do that. So with that being said, motivation is a fire from within. And if someone isn't as hungry as we would, I did like to work with them, we just put out the information. We'll invite them. We'll do whatever we can in our power. And then hopefully that motivation sparks up within them. But if it doesn't, hey, we've, we've tried. We've done what we can on our end. Yeah, you know, the, the part that you're doing, the investment that you're making into these people, whether they know it or not, is pretty impressive. So you've formed these corporations. You've created businesses that are providing massive value. How is it that uh, you were able to uh, catapult from just running a simple, small business, being content? You know, some people have this dream of, man, if I can just own the corner store and then I've made it. But, but you dream bigger. So tell us, how did you do it? I mean, I read books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which taught me that you should be not just working, you know, in the business or working on the business, be a strategic thinker. I've attended seminars. I've attended, you know, um, basically people who allowed me to see things in a different light. I've read my industry reports on the tax business, the real estate business, and it's taught me a lot of different things. And I've acquired mentors who have basically taught me the better way to do things. For example, I have a mentor named Rick Justice, um, who basically shows me the 12 practices of life and the 12 practices of business in order to solve abundance for humanity, essentially. So without knowing these people, I would still be a scarcity-minded individual. I wouldn't know what, I wouldn't know the greatest things to our life. And to be honest, God put us on this planet to give us an abundant amount of resources so we can do abundant amount of things. There's so many scriptures. When I read the Bible, I literally read scripture that said that we can be abundant in everything that we do and we should be, right? But the problem is our minds are so trapped, are so chained because nobody has taught us the better way to do things. So until somebody shows you the way, until you've read a book, until you've seen it with your own two eyes that it's possible, you will never think something is possible. So very true. What's next for Jeff? I mean, the next thing is to conquer the world, you know. <laughs> 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 I mean, in general, we plan to continue, you know, running the businesses. We plan to impact a lot of lives. Um, so within the Body Foundation, we're hoping to have over 100,000 students where we have programs going every day. Right now we have programs every Saturday in June. Our goal really in the future is to have programs run every day in every country. And, and until we've literally made every single person, human being on this planet, and I know we'll be going to space pretty soon, but until we made every single human being, you know, across all of humanity, financially literate, we haven't done our jobs essentially. And we've tried but we haven't done enough. So the goal is to make sure everybody is financially literate. And our end vision is to make sure we create a community of abundance. That's amazing. Uh, Jeff, what should I have asked you that we didn't cover? I mean, I think we've covered, we, we've covered everything. Um, I would say first and foremost, definitely want to thank you for having me 
um, on your show. And also, yeah, if you need resources, if you want to contact me, whatever it is, the easiest way is to reach me on my website, which is jeffbadu.com. Once again, that's jeffbadu.com. And that site has all the resources. I'm telling you, over 100 hours worth of free education. Then you have my books. I've written three books. Um, and then I also have a course. It's called the Infinite Wealth Course that's out there. And so with this, what I say is that since I've given it so much, nobody has an excuse when it comes to financial abundance. Because it's like, here's the site. All you got to do is go through the videos, go through the resources. It's all organized in a way where, you know, you, you can follow along. So it's like, that's the free stuff. That's the stuff I'm giving back. And then we have the foundation where we do the one-on-one -on -one with the students and, you know, we do the, the coaching and everything like that. And then, of course, we have our services. So for anyone who needs more hands-on outside of the foundation, outside of the JeffBadu.com website, you know, we do tax services, we do financial services, we do, um, we do a lot of stuff, you know. And so with that, I'm more than willing to help out anybody who's looking for that help, who's super hungry, who's motivated to get that. And I definitely appreciate you for having me today, Spencer. Thanks, Jeff. What a pleasure to have you on the podcast. <laughs> Absolutely.